Welcome to The The Cleaning, a podcast about Apple TV Plus's new show, Silo, based on wool, shift, and dust from the author Hugh Howey. His Silo series, and it's a new show on Apple TV Plus. My name's Bubba, and with me, as always, is someone you really think is not the kind of person that they want having children. It's Catfish! Ouch! Bubba, always happy to be podcasting with my favorite eccentric oddball. Oh, oh that's awesome. She's coming, too? <laughs> <laughs> it's you, Bubba. Oh, it is okay. You. All right. Hey, Yeah, I guys. said favorite. <laughs> Thank goodness. Listeners, we're going to be breaking down the very first episode of the very first season of the very first show called Silo on Apple TV+. Plus. It's called Freedom Day. Sheriff Holston Beckert's plans for the future are thrown off course after his wife meets a hacker with information about the silo. Catfish, this is a brand new series we're covering here at Double PHQ Podcast. Is. What is your rating out of 10 for Freedom Day? Well, Bob, I was since the first episode, I was going to give it triple O's. Wait, triple O's? Yeah. Outside oration oopsies. That's when you <laughs> mention the outside and oopsie. But then after the very end of the episode, we heard something very interesting. So I'm going to give this seven out of ten what I like to call double E's. Double E's? Yeah. Essential elevators. You should <laughs> not have to walk an entire day up or down stairs to get somewhere. What about communication? No. None of that. Bubba, yeah. I like this episode. It set up the real world. And and honestly, I think the whole reason that I'm ding this a little bit is I'm having a little bit of complex, mysterious, multi-year timeline shows. You know, when you read the book, you can read it as fast as you want and you can yep. get the whole story. And yep. I just feel like with Severance, with Yellow Jackets, I, I may be up to my limit for like, having a five year long story told to me and just kind of picking up mysteries along the way. I'm also docking it one entire point for having Allison use the phrase, the before times. No, we cannot hear that anymore. This did remind me a little bit of my favorite time traveling show, a comedy called The Future Man, yeah. or just Future Man on Hulu. And they used to, they, they would make fun of this kind of thing by calling it the pre-pre. So oh, anyway, no. I'm knocking it for that. It it's it's very well done. It's very well shot. There's a long, compelling mystery. I don't know, Bubba. I just may have too many of these on here. So on on, on my plate, I want to get to the end of it already, and I'm hoping that you will answer a question for me at the end. I've got three double C's for you. At the double end. C's. Yeah, catfish questions. You know Bubba, what? That was no probably pre- funny in the before times. <laughs> in the pre-pre. Oh, yes, sorry. Bubba. Okay, no one cares about what I have to think about it. But you know what people do care about? What? Maybe just slightly more is what you thought about. What was your rating for the first episode of Silo, a show that you've been waiting for forever and ever? You love the books. I read the books. I can't remember whether I told you about them, but you just like went through the whole thing. You just picked it up and you were crazy for these. So, you know, that could lead you to be very particular. So what is your rating for the first episode of The Silo? Well, Catfish, Mm -hmm. I'm going to give season one, episode one of The Silo Mm -hmm. eight double F's out of ten. Double F's? Well, after this episode, F the future. (laughs) The future looks terrible. I'm going 8 out of 10, and you're absolutely right. I have been waiting on pins and needles for this show for a decade. I have been hyping it on our social media accounts hardcore. I've been telling everybody that's like, oh, you know, Game of Thrones, those are really great books that became a really good shows. But, you know, the next books, which could become a really great show, the Silo series by Hugh Howey. Wool, the first book in the Silo series, is great. I'm like, boy, it has all the ingredients in Game of Thrones If they put this on TV like they did Game of Thrones, it's going to blow up. Speaking of Game of Thrones, for everybody who checks out our Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon coverage on our podcast entitled The Joffrey of Podcasts, my reaction to the first episode of Silo is a bit like my reaction to the first episode of House of the Dragon. I was watching it. My mind could say, yes, I I comprehend that this is the book, the story I know being told in the television medium. But I wasn't emotionally engaged with it. I was a bit like, oh, boy, is this going to grab me? 
Thank goodness that at about the 26 minute mark, because I looked exactly on the counter, I was like, oh, okay, this is getting good. This is getting tense. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Whereas the book, Wool, I was hooked immediately from the first page. This took about 26 minutes for me to get hooked. And then I thought it was a really strong premiere episode. I am going to ding it a couple of points because I think it sets up a problem that becomes a big problem in the second episode. And listeners, we've seen the second episode, but we're not really going to talk about it in this podcast. And so I think it sets up some problems that the second episode really fumbles on compared to the book. But this is tense. This is good. This uh, I'm going to talk a bit at the very end. We're going to have a book section where it's not really spoilers about the book, but we're going to talk about things about how the novel wool is told in the third person limited perspective view. And the show is trying to do a limited person, a third person omniscient view. And I think that's causing some troubles in translating the greatness of the book to the TV show, especially in episode two. But we'll talk about that in the next podcast. Again, at the 26 minute mark, I was like, Holy smokes, it's becoming good, and I thought it was really great from the rest of the way through. Listeners, we love to say, who cares what we think? What do we care about, Catfish? But but we want to hear what you think so that we can talk about it on the podcast, our double L's. Double L's. Loyal listeners always give us great feedback and great food for thought. So there are so many ways you can reach out to us. You can please come to our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash Double PHQ. You can also hit us up on Twitter and Insta at Double PHQ. You can also, if you're watching us on YouTube, and if you are, please ignore the parts where you see our face. Just go down, hit the like button, subscribe, give us feedback there, and we will talk about it on the next podcast. We are very, very excited to hear from our listeners, and we might even have a little something for them at the end of the season. Ooh, yes, we will. Everybody stay tuned. So Catfish... Mm -hmm. This episode was tense. It dealt with death of a uh, character who we meet. And I think we have some connection for the pain and the misery that she goes through in this episode. So I thought rather than diving into the episode straight to deal with that pain and misery, Mm -hmm. we should do what we do here on Double PHQ. And that is is wacky and silly (laughs) at times. So I love it. Very serious, emotionally draining episode. I've seen people on Mm -hmm. line mention So we're going to start off with some light silliness. And so our first game is going to be inside or outside. Do you want this character from Silo to stay inside the Silo? Or do you hate this character, dislike this character, and you want him outside the Silo to go clean? Oh, I love it, Bubba. I love it. Listeners, we want you to play along. Once again, at Double PHQ on Twitter, Instagram, Hive, YouTube comments, Facebook.com slash double PHQ. Play along. Do you want the character inside the silo with you? Or do you want them outside in the uh, in the not quite beautiful <laughs> landscape? Catfish, let's start off with what I think is almost the main character for this first episode. Mm-hmm. That's actress Rashida Jones character, Allison. Do you want her inside the silo, silo with you? Or do you want her outside the silo because she's asking questions and causing trouble? This is really tough, Bubba. It it all depends on what you think is out there, right? Whether you want someone inside or outside the silo and where you are. You know what? I I know this is the very first one, but I'm going to fudge it, Bubba. This is an academic question. She gone. She outside the silo. Yes, Catfish. I would say that based on what we've seen in the show, Mm -hmm. I think you want her outside because why bring in a rotting corpse? I mean, that's (laughs) That is a great point, Bubba. Terrible. I love it. Terrible. Okay, well, how about her husband, Sheriff Holston? Sometimes they refer to him by Becker, his last name. Uh, Do you want him inside the silo with you? Or is this the type of uh, tragically depressed person who should be outside the silo and won't bum everybody out? Bubba, my favorite sheriff is the inside and alone. It's the solo silo man suffering because he wouldn't listen to his partner and he was like you're out of here that's my job my job is more important than you so he deserves to suffer alone inside Mm -hmm. every community whether it's Mm -hmm. the old west the far distant future everybody needs a cop who's too old for this (laughs) and so i'm keeping him inside the silo with me 
Sheriff, you get to stay in the silo. That's my thought. Hey, the next character up is Rebecca Ferguson. Really doesn't appear in this first episode too much. Her mm-hmm. character, Juliet Nichols, does appear, but unlike the marketing, she's really a small part of this first episode. Catfish, what do you think? Juliet stays inside the silo or she gets kicked outside the silo? Well, Bubba, I don't have enough information to really decide yet. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give her a tentative inside since according to a coworker, the whole enterprise would collapse without her. So let's just for safety's sake, keep her in for now. Keep her in. Heck yes. <laughs> I like breathing. I like the lights on. Uh, you can stay. You can be as moody and sweaty as you want. Keep working. How about Allison's, I guess, supervisor there at the place where she worked? Actor Tim Robbins, whose character is Bernard. You want him inside the silo or you want to kick him outside the silo? Bubba, he, if, uh, when I become king of the silo, he's mm-hmm. out in the very first, he's my very first out. He's an officious post remover. This guy takes like, you know, what, what, what are they doing here? What, what are they even doing here? It's not really that important, but he's got, he's like Mr. Follow the rules, dot the I's, cross the T's. He gone, Bubba. What about you? He's a micromanager who is a stickler for rules. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. <laughs> There'll be plenty of rules outside. <laughs> I love it. Um, how about uh, this character? Uh, he's the deputy there to the sheriff, the main deputy we see uh, for most of the episode. Actor Will Patton. Boy, he's been in a lot of things. As Deputy Marnes. Inside or out? Well, but he's been in so many things. I'm going to have to say just, I'm going to have to say out. Just so he has a chance to go film whatever few remaining television shows he hasn't filmed yet. I did note, curiously, yeah. at the end of the episode, that he was listed as a guest star. Would a show do that to try to get around an uh, actor's SAG salary? What do you think? They could, but not with not with, not with with somebody like him. Mm. He wouldn't agree to that. So uh, my suspicion is, yeah. is that... Uh, He's not going to be around for the entire season. Well, what if they just keep making him walk up and down the stairs? (laughs) (laughs) Well, that would be a reason why. But mostly he's just like, look, my agent's on the phone. I got three more, three different television shows to shoot the rest of this week. So can can we hurry this up? Uh, A couple more characters. What about Mm -hmm. uh, this character, George, who Allison is working with? He's the one who's like, God, I wanted you to come down here. I wanted you to come down here. I've been trying to get you to come visit me played by Ferdinand Kingsley, and he he wants to learn how to reformat his hard drive. He's not going to take it to Best Buy So, and the good guys, so uh, he's got to call up Allison. Does he stay or does he go? I'm going to say in only because now he's dead and we need something to fertilize the plants. In. Uh, got to recycle everything. Uh, terrible. Okay, how about a, another female character, actress Geraldine James, playing... Mayor Ruth Johns, in or out? In. We need her. We need this calm uh, functionary to run the run the whole thing. So I'm going to say in in for her. What about you, Bubba? She was so commanding. You know, she's like Freedom Day should be remembered with horns, with silence. Like she should have said with popcorn, with (laughs) chocolate chip cookies. Like she's got a lot of power. I'm saying Mayor Johns gets to stay inside the silo. Uh, Catfish, let's do a couple more. How about Allison's right. friend there at the office where she works? Friend gets to stay. Friend gets to leave. Uh, I, I'm going to keep her in. I mean, she looks like she's just the kind of person that enjoys doing this useless work with a smile on her face. We need somebody like this in this office that's doing nothing. As somebody who now is working in kind of a corporate drone office, uh-huh. you need somebody who loves to talk about things that aren't work. Yeah, she gets to stay. <laughs> she gets to stay. Uh, two more. How about Gloria, the conspiracy lady? In or out? Oh, no. She's, she is, she's trouble, Bubba. She, she's got to go out. She's got to go out. She's got to go out. In fact, I think they should have, well, just because she, cause she's causing so much trouble, she should have been the first one to go out. They should have held Allison on a holding uh, zone because I don't know how much longer Gloria is going to last. Man, I'm with you, Kefiz. I've got to send her outside. You know, we live in a silo. There are limited resources. This woman's running water 24-7 out of the tap. Gloria, you're out. Okay, our final one. Uh, I didn't catch this doctor's name. I just called uh-huh. him Dr. Creepy. Uh, he's uh, he's helping or not helping 
Allison with her attempts to have a baby. Dr. Creepy, does he get to stay inside the silo or does he go out? Bubba, yeah. I got to keep him in. Well, I have to keep him in because I don't know what kind of, um, you know, how much medical training they have here. You know, it doesn't seem like they um, believe in uh, learning things from the past or keeping any documentation from the past. So I would say if anybody's got any kind of medical knowledge at all, even if they seem like they belong in the movie Brazil, you got to keep them. (laughs) Catfish, I'm Mm -hmm. against you this time. I'm sending him outside, but it's even better. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put him on the other side of a sheet, which he doesn't realize is outside. <laughs> you know, he tried to fool me by being on the other side of the sheet saying, Hey, I removed your device. That's what I'm going to do. Dr. Creepy, enjoy the creepy landscape. You are outside. I love it. I love it. All right, Bubba. Yeah. Here is another, another game we have here. All and right. I like to call it better or worse. Mm. In this episode, did the people in the silo have it better or worse than people in the before times, Ooh. a.k.a. us? Better or worse, Bubba? Ooh, you got to give me a second to think about it. Why don't okay. you go first on this one? Uh, who has it better, the people in the show or the people in the before times? What do you think? We have officious prick bosses as well. <laughs> yes. But apparently they've got plenty of water. They're spraying the crops Gloria gets to use as much water as she wants. I don't, Bubba. I live in California. I don't get to use as much water as I want. So episode one verdict, they have it better than us. Ooh, man, Catfish. That is very limited, limited. You got to think of the whole scope of things, Catfish, because I completely agree. They've got it better than us. I was recently Mm -hmm. in London on the West End, and I went to go see some shows. And I got to be honest. That show there they had for Freedom Day, much better, much better theatrics, better, you know, it's worth the price of admission. You know, I'd go see that theater anytime. Nobody broke out into awkward song. I'm all for it. Love it. Love it. Hey, listeners, we, we're being silly. Hopefully you're okay after that very emotionally draining episode to mm-hmm. have some silliness with us. Who do you want to see keep inside the silo? Who do you want to kick out of the silo? Is it what's better about living in our present day or what's better about living there in the silo write to us and let us know okay catfish Mm -hmm. we are both book readers but we've been pretty good in and we'll be continue to be good about not giving spoilers in this episode of the podcast and so i especially will bubba since i have not i did not reread the book before the show intentionally so it's been a while since i read the book I did. I reread it just so I would get familiar with it. And again, at the end of this episode, we're going to have some book talk. Sometimes the book talk will be real spoilery heavy. This one won't be. It really won't be spoilers, in my opinion, unless, once again, you consider things like what is the what perspective is the book written in, that type of stuff. But that'll be at the very end of this podcast. But the one thing I think hopefully it's okay to say is that the episode and the book begin exactly the same way. Holston takes off his badge, puts himself in a cell, and says, I want to go outside. What do you think? Is that a powerful, strong opening? You know, in today's world of of so many shows streaming, is that enough of a hook to grab everybody? What did you think of it? Well, Bob, I was willing to go along with that. You know what I liked about the the beginning was his deputy, the the ever present uh, Will Patton, is like, don't say it, don't say it. And so we don't find out until later in the episode, which is very cool, that if you say it, you go. So I don't know. This, this sounds like some official police monkey business that he doesn't let him go. But it is an interesting hook. What I liked about this episode was they showed us things bit by bit, but I was still interested the whole way. I mean, again, as I said, it wasn't until nearly the end of the, end of the episode we realized they've got all these things, cows, plants, abundant water, but not enough electricity or know-how to make an elevator. <laughs> Not even for official police use. Nobody named Otis survived the uh, apocalypse. Rather quickly, almost immediately after the opening credits, we jump back and we see how we got to this place. Holston and his wife, Allison. Good news, buddy. They have permission to have a kid. You live in a silo, limited resources. Population control has got to be strict. And this is like a happy moment, of course, You know, we see him put himself in a cell. So we're like, well, how did this happy moment turn bad? 
And I almost want to say even the happy moment is a bit awkward. How would you like to walk into a restaurant and have everybody look at you and think, they're going to have kids. They're going to do it. I mean, I mean you know, it seemed, they both seem pretty enthusiastic about w- what this meant for them. Like uh, otherwise they had restrictions, but they don't. So it is uh, weird, though, that people are uh, in your business. That's probably the only time we found out about it, because you would imagine people are more in your business than even that. But that was uh, pretty telling. Real quickly, the show progresses, and we see the clock is going down. Allison has gone to the doctor. She's gotten this thing taken out, the pregnancy blocker taken out, or at least she believes it's been taken out. And we get to see a bit of her life. No success yet. And her boss is coming up. And, you know, how dare you post that blog post without my approval? <laughs> Terrible. And it's going quickly. Suddenly, we're real quickly into the episode. There's only 157 days left to get pregnant. Holy smokes. Let's do this. Now, we, we get little tastes of this throughout, which is interesting because there's no talk about how did we get in here. It goes back to an idea of, our, our, you know, there was this big uh, day when uh, our history got erased. So it's funny that instead of going back to that mystery, it goes back to to, to the mystery of how did this all happen to the, the, the focus is on everything getting wiped by the rebels. Right. They're tearing down our statues. <laughs> Well, I, I joke, but is that supposed to be a correlation to the world we're in now where, you know, oh, they're destroying our history? A bit awkward. We hear that this celebration, Freedom Day, is coming up, and we hear it's been a long time since a cleaning. Now, did you remember from the books what a cleaning was when the mayor said it's been a long time since a cleaning? The old camera lens and the screen, you can't see nothing. Could you? Did you remember that? I didn't, but then shortly after I saw the the – the screen to the outside world and i was like oh yeah that's what that means now i had forgotten how someone got picked to do that but then i remembered <laughs> now we have this gloria coming up once again it's it's got to be awkward you know having every single person in the silo know you're the one trying to get pregnant and gloria she's you know she's got her method she's got her quirkiness she's but like the later, mysterious juju woman yes but later we find out she doesn't really want to talk to Allison about that. She wants to get to, you know, the big questions. You know, what's the meaning of life, the universe, and everything? 42. Okay, spoilers, spoilers. Thank goodness Gloria didn't tell him that. But Gloria's questions are important. It's the ones, as a viewer, you're thinking about. Why do we live underground? What really happened out there? And then the one that is, to me, a complete left turn. Do you really think you're the kind of person they want having children? Oh, snap, that is is kind of the beginning moment. It wasn't 26 minutes in, but this is the beginning moment where I thought, oh, okay, this show could be as good as the books. And so I, I did love that moment. Right, especially, you know, that that leads to the question, and it is asked later on by her husband, well, who is the they? So, of course, that's one that you start looking around. Who is the they? I mean, the most obvious no way it could be they is Tim Tim Robbins. Because he is out there twirling his mustache about those those damn blog posts. Well, it's really a beard. I think he's kind of twirling. <laughs> right. <laughs> he's twirling it all at once. He's using all <laughs> his, he tries to bring his feet up to twirl. He asked Allison's coworker, can you twirl this part over here? Oh, I can yeah. get to. And she and wants I, to do it to do anything other than work. Oh, here. I yeah, got boss, that, boss. Let me do no it. worries. <laughs> Allison, you know, she's getting frustrated because she hasn't had this kid yet it's you know the clock is ticking literally Mm -hmm. you know not figuratively but literally it's clicking on her at the same time she gets this ticket from somebody named george a programmer at this point down in the mids and she's like okay let's have one less bang with holston where everybody in the office is listening boy that is awkward you ever had uh intimate relations in an office catfish no, but I did share a dorm room with a friend who uh, just decided to just go ahead with it, even though I was in the same room. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> it's awkward. Yeah, dorm rooms are a lot like living in the silo. In fact, if, if my college dorm, I'd rather be in the silo than that <laughs> pigsty. So this guy, George, he's got stuff. You're not supposed to have stuff. Naughty, naughty. Mm-mm. He's got an old hard drive from the rebellion, and he wants to know how to retrieve it. 
while this is going on, the mayor is giving her speech. You know, this is the day we regained our freedom. They didn't succeed, those rebels, thank the founders, but they destroyed our history. It should be remembered with horns. It should be remembered with silence. The lights dim and then the lanterns float up. This is this is beautiful. You know, we should talk about Apple TV just in general. You were talking mm-hmm. about Severance being a great show. They spend money. This thing looks good. Oh, yeah. It, 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 the, the whole the whole episode looked beautiful and it really gave you an idea. I, I mean, honestly, that's one big difference from reading it, even though you even though they tell you how big it is. You just can't imagine that it's going to look this beautiful. You just think it's a corn silo that's a lot bigger. This is this is magnificent. They quickly figure out a way to retrieve the stuff off the hard drive. And as soon as they do, Allison realizes, oh, no, it's not just that this is an old, quote unquote, relic, something from before the rebellion. It's trouble. And she's telling George, she's like, they can send you out to clean for this. And George is like, are you going to tell your husband? Woo. And this was the 26 minute moment where I suddenly got engaged with the show. And I was like, OK, hell yeah. Are you going to tell your husband? Never a good question that anybody should ever ask. Not good. And it's right around this moment where Allison, as she's leaving George in the in the, what I guess you would call the Freedom Day festivities are still going on. She looks totally like she you know she's over it it's gone any happiness she had is gone in another kind of oh snap moment she gets into bed with holston holston's you know like hey honey honey come on i'm doing this because i want to have a baby and then allison puts it in the past tense so did i oh ouch she is really getting hit from all sides here because this is sticking in her craw so much she goes and sees crazy gloria why wouldn't they want us to have children Catfish, if you run an authoritarian society like, you know, Big Brother saying who's going to have kids, do you really only want the uninquisitive to have kids? I mean, even if you're an authoritarian, don't you want, I guess, inquisitive minds to have kids? But no, uh, no. (laughs) Why not? (laughs) Because trouble begets trouble, Bubba. And you want just like the cows are calm. You want you want sheeple, not people. Dang, dang. At this point, we have a brief... Unless you're a doctor, and then you can be as strange as you want. (laughs) Well, I was going to say, at this point, you know, it's not really a focus, but I could tell, wait a minute, the pregnancy clock is under three digits. Holy smokes, this is not going well. And I thought a beautiful shot that they don't really linger on too much, but there's this file called the Jane Carmody Cleaning and she, uh, Allison and George click on it and you can kind of see an image reflected in oh, her yeah, glasses. Absolutely. That was really, really beautiful. And then, you know, she's already been disillusioned. Then she's really just out of it. And she, she, you know, walks the, she <laughs> driving on the wrong side of the road, literally by walking on the wrong side of the stairwell. Hey, you, keep right. that, you, just, you just, you say, why can't we have inquisitive people? But that's what comes along with it. Nonconformist walking on the wrong side of the stairwell, causing trouble. <laughs> Excuse me, you dropped that and didn't pick it up. Go out to clean. Dang. Well, it the pregnancy clock is down to zero days, seven hours and 44 minutes. And she's like, why try? If you've been trying for a year, I mean, this is, this is just hashtag a harsh. Not good, huh? No, that is just horrible. It is so funny because I was just... Because because he's like, the appointment is tomorrow. So I pretty much had thought, okay, the time is up. And then you see that there is an entire night left. And she's just like, I'm done. There's no point to this. I'm tired of you. Stay out of there. This is, a, this is a no do not cross zone. The entire area down here. Right. My girlfriends normally get to that spot quicker than after a year. You know. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So Allison didn't show up. Halston went to the appointment with Creepy Doc. She's not there. She's at home and running the water. Uh-oh, and not good. Allison, oh, no. This part, this part, I, I wrote in the show notes, I wrote, oh, snap, and then I wrote double oh, snap. Allison, first she really snaps at her husband. Talking is not listening. Oh, they were never going to let us have children. 
then the piece de resistance of holy crap, he didn't take out my birth control. I did. <gasps> Selective surgery. Ouch. I know. I was like, I was before she showed it to him, I was like, how does she know? How does she really know? Right. And then when you, when she showed it to him, I was like, okay, she knows. <laughs> that is that is so powerful. That what is if, it. What if she oh went my to the God. doctor and the doctor's like, no, you don't understand. That's the pregnancy enhancer. It looks oh. just like the pregnancy inhibitor, <laughs> but that's the enhancer. Oh my God. Whole, I mean, this was just once again, what kind of shocks can a show give you? This is the shock that is very true to the book books. This is a shock that is why I got so invested in this story. Holy smokes. Allison, then the next time we find her, she's in the cafeteria. She's ranting. The earth is flat. They don't want us to see. Those, the moon landing was fake. Holy smokes. Her husband, Sheriff, tries to calm her down. And then she says the words that you cannot say. Mm -hmm. I want to go out. Oh, and everybody hears it. Oh, my goodness. But the question is, how long do you have? Oh, that's After you say, yeah. I want to go out. In other words, what if you said, I want to go out, beat, 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 to a good dinner? <laughs> like, how long do you have before you could say something else? Before they go, okay, that's it, done. It would, do you think you could immediately say, I want to go in? <laughs> like, whoops, did I say out? I meant in. Did yeah. I want to go in. I want to stay in. Oh, my goodness. And OK, so we have a quick meeting of the minds, the mayor, the deputy, the sheriff. They're trying to talk through it. Um, anyway, we can uh, fudge the rules on this. Hey, let's search Gloria, crazy Gloria's place. Let's search George's place. There's no way you can fudge the rules. This is a this is there is no three strikes and you're out. This is one strike and you are out. We see a brief shot of them preparing this suit, which is going to allow her to go outside. But it is tough, and we have kind really, of really honest to God oh. for a suit that's not going to last that long. They re they really put too much work into it. Yeah, a lot of yeah, that's a good good point. A lot of resources are going into these things, and you can never get them back. They're like, once you're out, you're out. Yeah, they it, it's too bad they didn't have a little robot to drag it back in. Well, I wonder if the robot would get contaminated, and you'd almost have to set it on fire before it could come back in. And then, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's a wonderful, tough question. Now, Allison and her husband, the sheriff, have one last night together, and they're, uh, she's apologizing. I, I think he's apologizing. And then Allison, I think, asks the great question, a great Absolutely. question from the book, a great question from the show. Okay, you're sentenced to death. This is a bit like you are sentenced to death, and as we walk you to your electric chair, we want you to sweep up, uh, uh, sweep up the hallway. It's a mess. And it's like, why would you do it? And she asks, why do people clean? I mean, yeah, why? Yeah, why? They're being sentenced to death. Why would why, why would why would they then, yes, yeah, sweep up? Sorry, later they just run as fast as they can. She's got her own idea on it, which makes sense, but also kind of doesn't make sense. Right. Because again, once you've been evicted, I don't think you'd be like, let me show them the error of their ways. <laughs> because even though it's dirty, you can still kind of see through it. There's no, there, even though it's dirty, there, there's no thinking, well, maybe if it was cleaned up, all this, this barren, uh, this, this barren scenery would look like green lush forest. Well, she did it. She told her husband, hey, if I'm right and it's perfect outside, I'm going to clean and then I'm going to come back and get you. At least from our view, that's certainly not what happened. Yeah, I love this line. The mayor says that, hey, once you're outside the airlock, you're outside the law. It's like international waters. You can do anything out there. You can gamble. You can't except breathe, probably. But you can gamble. You can do whatever you want. Well, here's the question, right? This is the real question at this point that people are asking themselves. OK, if what she saw was real, did they somehow digitally fake her falling down? Was it perhaps that there was only so much air in the uh, the the suit? Mm -hmm. How what actually happened outside? No, that is a question it wants you to ask. But the show is not going to give you kind of time to think about it right then. Just immediately jumps two years later. George, he got transferred. You know, he was apparently in the mid level of the silo. He got transferred to the bottom to work in mechanical. And now he's dead. 
And the sheriff and his deputy, they are hearing reports that an engineer is claiming he was murdered. And then Catfish, to investigate, you got to do some aerobics, buddy. I mean, I wonder where George was originally that uh, that Allison could just take a day and uh, hop down there to see him. Have you ever done any of those things in L.A. for everybody who uh, is watching this? There's a big tall skyscraper called the U.S. Bank Building. And once a year, they have one of these things where it's like, hey, everybody, you can climb all the stairs all the way to the top like you do it for a uh, it's like the equivalent of a 5K or a charity run. Dude, walking down is one thing. I mean, that hurts your knees anyway, but then walking up. Ho, ho, ho. No way, Bubba. I've done the Venice steps. That's enough for me. Oh, those are very famous steps in L.A., everybody. Please try them out. Um, oh, I want to say that, you know, Catfish, you, I know you've been to Europe a lot. I've been to Europe a lot. I've done a lot of climbing of stairs in Europe, but there is the St. Paul's Cathedral in London and then whatever that cathedral is in um, Vienna. You want to talk about some brutal stairs to walk up. Oh, my goodness. What about the, uh, the Vatican, Those uh, oh, that, yeah, yeah. That, that very narrow staircase that people are going up and down at the same time? Oh, man, that was fun. That was cool. Always go to the top of the Vatican Dome if you can, everybody. All right, so the engineer is Juliet Nichols. Our first look at Rebecca Ferguson. Catfish, what do you think of actress Rebecca Ferguson, who, uh, based on the marketing, is probably the lead of this show? What are your thoughts on her? I, most Americans would know her from the Mission Impossible movies. Any thoughts? I, I think she's a good actress, and I find her interesting. So I'm very uh, excited for this. And what I'm also interested in is, bit by bit here, is that even though the sh- we, we don't know the time from the beginning of the episode, and then we go back in time, and then they see mm-hmm. two years later. Mm-hmm. Where is the where is the sheriff in that? Because. The deputy says, I haven't seen you like this in a while. What changed? And he says, it's because of Juliet. So we have to yeah. assume that the that the end of the episode is a, later than the be, than the beginning of the episode because right. uh, our sheriff is no longer uh, so excited to go outside. Man, oh, man. Let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. I want to know where that hard drive is. It caused all the trouble. I'm putting the hard drive outside. Stop causing trouble, computers. Hard drive Ge- number 18. The the Geek Squad, you're in trouble. I'm telling you, I'm never using you again, you losers. Love it. Hey, that's our thought on the episodes. We're going to ask you this constantly throughout our podcast. If you're just now joining us here at Double PHQ, tell us what you thought we want to know. Catfish, we, we've been a bit too serious. You know what that means. It's time for one of our silly games. Let's do it, Bubba. All right. This is what I like to call double S. Double S? Yeah. Silo suspicions. Something that you suspect based on the evidence in this episode. And Bubba, I'm going to go first. I'm going to go out on a ledge. Uh Uh-oh, a ledge. That's right. I'm going to say that Rashida Jones, she's going to show up at least one more time in this series. I said it. I know it's a surprise. Everyone's like, who's Rashida Jones? She's a nobody. (laughs) <laughs> Obviously, they would only have her for one episode, but Bubba, out on a ledge, I'm going to say Rashida Jones back somehow. That is your silo suspicion? That's my silo suspicion. My solo silo suspicion. What is your solo silo suspicion, Bubba? Okay, I think mm-hmm. that, and I don't want to use book knowledge, but I think that the deputy, this episode ends with the deputy saying to the sheriff, what changed in you? I think he got Rebecca Ferguson's character pregnant. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. That's not a serious, that's a non-serious silo suspicion. Um, I think that it's almost too easy that George didn't commit suicide, right? Like it's almost too easy that this guy committed suicide. That that he well, wouldn't plus have it's been it's been a period, but it's been a period of time too, which is weird. You would think since he caused trouble, maybe he was a little bit more careful after yeah. his co-conspirator had to walk the plank. But uh, it does seem like that was a little too long. So, yeah. So where is the drive and who can find it? And who knows how to get out of this silo through the silo tunnel? Ooh, wonderful questions. Listeners, we're going to be tackling episode two and all the episodes this season. Be sure to subscribe. Catfish, let's do one more thing before we get to some great listener feedback. All right, Bubba, and these these are kind of some serious questions here. These are this is the double C. Uh, 
Double Z. Yeah, catfish questions. All right, so here's the first one. All right. Obviously, not everything is what it seems here. Do you think, based on this episode, not based on any knowledge, book knowledge, does anyone know what the real situation is and they're hiding it to retain their power or has so much time passed that nobody really knows what's going on? In other words, all the real story has not been passed down. So no one's acting nefariously here. They're just trying to protect what they think is is something that caused them trouble. Ooh, I think both could work. I think if you have it be some person who knows everything, well, then you have a big drama. Is this person going to slip up and accidentally reveal some something, something? Or are they going to have to dig into this person and, and maybe even torture him? You know, talking about uh, current events or old current events, do we tor- torture for information? So I think that could work. I also think, though, by focusing so much on this hard drive, who's to say, you know, you mentioned it says 18. What about the hard drives one through 17? Who's to say there isn't going to be almost some information that somebody just needs, you know, we need an Allison to to decode and tell right. us what happened. I think they have it, to tell us what happened, but is it a person or is it a thing? Right. That's the question I right. want. I mean, the real question is, this is funny because this comes up to something we talked about with House of the Dragon is like, if you have to pass this information on and there's only one person who has it, no boy, way. they better not pass pass away early or that right. information is gone. And that's why I feel like it's possible that nobody really knows. But it's also possible that the information gets passed down, just like when people become president of the U.S. and they get all this, you know, they get to find out what's really going on with the UFOs <laughs> and JFK. All right, Bubba. Man, I, I was going to say, it, it, yeah. our former President Trump got the keys to McDonald's. Ooh. <laughs> Beautiful. There go right, some Bubba. subscriptions. We apologize for being so silly. You got another question? Yeah. I got two more questions. Ooh, let's if hear you it. got booted out, mm. w- no matter what the situation was outside, mm-hmm. would you clean? I'm a very headstrong person, Mm -hmm. so I tend to think no. What about you? Would you clean if it's like, hey, I'm going to my death, and you want me to do you a solid on the way, person who's sending me to my death? No matter what was going on outside, I would jump up and down as if everything was great, flipping (laughs) the bird and double bird. I'd give him double bird and run away as fast as possible, skipping. (laughs) That's what I would do. That's pretty good. Listeners, what would you do? Would you clean for these bums who just kicked you out of the silo? Not cool, people. Not cool. All right, Bubba, Ooh. here's my last question. This goes last to my, the reason why I, I was a little down on this rating is because I'm a little disconcerned that I'm starting another thing that I won't find out the answer for years. So, Bubba, you probably know the answer to this, so please help me out. Are they going to finish the first book? In the first season, are they going to drag this entire book out for several seasons and then try to get like 15 years out of these three books? Please make me feel better. If you believe the showrunners, Mm -hmm. they have a hard set plan for four seasons. (laughs) Yes, Catfish, four (laughs) seasons of 10 episodes each. That's 40 hours. And then to get even crazier, Catfish. Yeah, Uh uh-huh. So that's three books into four seasons. They have come out and admitted that this season doesn't go to the end of the first book. Wait, are you saying they're going to do f- three books in four seasons? That yes. makes me feel better. Three books in four seasons. That's the plan. Because when the first book came out, it was self-contained enough. He didn't, there was, I felt like I got a full story in the first in the first book. And then he just kind of expanded the world. So at right. least if I had the first book, I would have a full story told. Well, we're not getting to the end of the first book in this first season, but we're going to get, uh, since I just read it, I think you're going to get to about 80%. That's my guess. I, I've not seen any episodes beyond episode two, which we're going to cover on our next podcast. But based on the episode titles, I think we're going to get out about 80% of the first book in this first season. And it's going to le- leave viewers a real tantalizing idea of, ooh, that's fascinating. And they are currently, I'm pretty sure, filming season two. So this isn't one of those things like Netflix's 1899 where they're going to cancel it after one season and you're left with nothing but questions. This, where you're at least going to get 10 more episodes, which they're filming now, 
you would assume if they're filming now, they at least have some sort of scripts and aren't affected by the current writer's strike, which I know is affecting severance as we speak. Well, but the rumors are that's not the only thing affecting severance right now. Oh, that's true. That's true. So we will see how that works out. Uh, As we know, there was a little little something that happened with Ash versus Evil Dead that Mm -hmm. sort of upsetted uh, that series and uh, and not in a way that we liked. So, uh, all right. So that's that, Bubba. Catfish, we're going to jump to feedback. Now, admittedly, we are recording this on the Friday the 5th. Of May, the day that the episode came out, it's technically got released a little early, but it hasn't even been out 24 hours yet. So we only have one bit of feedback so far from a true Double L loyal listener. What does Dooley's left leg say, Catfish? He said, watched episode one last night, well, 3.30 a.m. my time due to someone's irresponsible tweet. That was you, Bubba. I know. You made him stay up at 3.30. I know. Dooley said, loved it. So yes, yes, and yes. I'm setting up episode two now. So many questions already. I hope it's going to be a slow reveal. Yeah, Dooley, it's going to be slow for sure. But we get pieces of answers to keep the interest there. Yes, I think we will. Yeah, that's all we can say, Dooley. I'm so glad you loved it. Like I said, I've been telling everybody, oh, man, this book series is great. This book series is great. And so uh, if anybody watched it and really thought this was a terrible show, I would feel so guilty. It doesn't seem like we've had that yet. But hey, if you didn't like it and you've listened this far into our podcast, we want to hear from you at Double PHQ, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ, YouTube comments. We want to hear it. As I mentioned, we're going to end this podcast with just a little book talk each week. But in this first one, for the first episode, I don't consider these spoilers you might, I mean, these are, they're not about the plot. They're just about the, the way the book is formatted. So let's dive in. Let's go outside and have some book talk. So one of the things you'll notice immediately if you've read the books and now are watching the series is that the books are told from a third person limited point of view. The beginning of the book, all this section of the book is that we've gotten so far on the show is told from Sheriff Holston's perspective. So if Holston doesn't know something, the reader doesn't know something. It's very limited. You know what he knows in his thoughts. You, you, you read them. But again, you aren't really reading other people's thoughts. And if they're not around Holston and they said, oh, I went to the store, you know, that's what Holston knows. He doesn't know if they went to the store or they didn't go to the store. This show, like most television shows, is what you would call third person omniscient. I can't ever say it. How do you say it, Catfish? Omniscient. Omniscient. Thank you. And we can follow characters who aren't Holston, like Allison, and see what she's doing. We can have Mm -hmm. scenes with the deputy and the mayor where Holston isn't there and really see how they're doing. And so it does change the focus a bit. And for me, I went 8 out of 10, but there's something actually real positive in the book of being really in third person limited. And you're hearing this story from Allison, once again, only from Holston's point of view. And it's like, is my wife really breaking is my wife really because she can't have a kid really kind of losing it with some of her crazy theories? And I think that does almost work better in the book than in the show where we can see, OK, yeah, Allison is really upset about not having a kid, but she's doing this. Inve- she, we can see she actually is investigating and finding out things and, and mysteries. And you could see where this is coming from. And so as a reader, you're like, well, why did why is, did Holston's wife suddenly put on the tinfoil hat? Whereas a show person it's like oh okay i see exactly why she did it and so right i mean you could not you you could still think that maybe she's a little crazy or that the people giving us are giving her information is crazy but right. when she shows him the uh that that she still has the the implant in that's where uh her story is confirmed right and that is a scene catfish which is not in the book so good that you bring that up so that that part of it never she doesn't have physical proof in, in that type of way in the book. The second point here in book talk that I'll get to in Catfish, this really goes to a question you asked a second ago about, well, are we, how far are we going to get into this book? I picked up my copy, my paperback copy of Wool mm-hmm. after the episode, and I was like, how far have they really gotten into this book? This 59-minute episode got 30 pages in. 30 pages in. In an hour-long episode. 
Now, admittedly, this is a TV show. They flesh out a lot of things that aren't sure. covered in the 30 pages. And that's good, you know, that you see a lot of things where, which maybe Holston doesn't see. And it allows you to see the silo and see this or that. Right. And right. so that's good. What the show is also doing, though, is fleshing out details that the book never touches upon. So you just mentioned a great thing about Allison removing this device from herself. That is not a part of the book. And it is the book never presents Holston with such um, physical evidence as a cop, you might say. And so that's something that listeners, you tell us if you've read the book and are still listening to this. Is that a good thing? A bad thing? Is it if you haven't read the novel, is it tough to tell if it's good or bad? Just give us your thoughts on it at double PHQ catfish. What do you think of George? And this is this is a thing I think is fine to say. George is really not on the page. If you read this whole book, George is not. George is kind of mentioned, but he ain't mentioned much. And we never see him. You know, we never have a scene of anybody remembering. Oh, I remember being alive with George. Like George ain't in it much. What do you think about us actually seeing these scenes of George and Allison? Good. Bad. Well, I mean, when you think about it, he's not. I mean, he's actually very, uh, we don't see him too much in this, although he is, right. uh, he is the one who shows us that there is some old tech around. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously he's going to be, he's the inciting incident for the sheriff uh, to meet the new person. So, uh, I mean, in that way, he's just kind of a trigger, but we, we, we don't see him that much. But, you know, he, he, you know, he doesn't really send her over the edge. It's really the pregnancy stuff that sends her over the edge. But it's a good, it's another good little tickler for us to know that there is s- stuff around. There's other stuff around. Oh, yeah. Well, we one thing, once again, I'm mentioning that George isn't on the page much. If you listen to interviews, George is going to be a big part of this season. That could be trouble because i'm like boy i love the book as it is and suddenly we're gonna have a whole lot of george stuff or it could be great in that in that george will be almost like a physical thing where so you in the book you know as in a lot of books when you're in that limited third person you hear their thoughts a lot and you think and you hear them think through oh maybe i should think about this maybe i should think about that maybe having george as a character on screen could be a positive thing of somebody saying maybe you should look into a b or c and d so right well we'll see Hey, for everybody here at The Cleaning, a podcast about Apple TV Plus's silo series, my name's Bubba. You can find me on Twitter individually at Fit and Trim. That's F-I-T-T-E-N-T-R-I-M, at Fit and Trim on Twitter. And you can hit me up at CJGman67 if you want to answer any of my catfish questions. Oh, so good. Hey, you've already got episode two. Watch it. Tweet at us. Tell us your thoughts on it. We'll be back with our thoughts on episode two entitled Holston's Pick or Holston's Choice. (laughs) No, it's Holston's Pick. What do you think that's about, Catfish? I mean, is it his comb? I was going to say he's uh, you. We watched a bit too many episodes of Hee Haw. He's a picking and a (laughs) grin. How many? No, never mind. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Catfish. So let's see if we can say it together. We'll see you on the next episode of The The Cleaning. Cleaning. Ooh, that was pretty good.